Well, good morning. God bless you, Life Church. I just want to encourage you today in an important word that we got on faith for the unforeseen. Faith for the unforeseen. Kids, you should dismiss the children's church. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do bless you today. We thank you, God, that in this moment, in this season, in this time, we can come before you that you could do for us what you've done for your servant Moses, what you've done for Joshua. Would you give us faith for the unforeseen? Would you prepare every heart that's listening, this word, listening to this word to be transformed, to be made new? Would you set us free, God, from every distraction of this past week, every weight, every anxiety, every stress, every worry, every fear? Would you cause us in this moment to be connected with you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Everything that you have for me to release into the hearts of your people, would, would you prepare me, God, to, to speak the words that you've given me for this flock in the name of Jesus? We bless you and we thank you for it. The amazing things that you have in store. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. God bless your life, church. I want to give you this encouraging word. Faith for the unforeseen. Last week we looked here in Deuteronomy chapter 31, the first eight verses, where it talks about God saying to Moses, Moses, I'm getting ready to take you home to glory. I want you to get my people prepared to follow my servant Joshua. We're going to look at these words, but then we're going to paraphrase chapter 32 and 33 and then look in detail at chapter 34 where God is speaking to Moses concerning the things that he has in store for him. Let's look at these verses. These are found from last week. <coughs> Genesis chapter 31 verse 1 and 2 it says this, and Moses went and spoke these words to the children of Israel and he told them, I am 120 years old today I can no longer go out and come in. It says, also the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. Verse 3 says, and the Lord your God himself crosses before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. And Joshua himself, uh, Joshua himself crossed over before you, just as the Lord has said. Verse 4 says this, and the Lord will do to them as he did to Zion and Og, the kings of the Amorites, there in their land, and when, and when he destroyed them. Verse 5 says, And the Lord will give them over to you, that you may do to them according to every commandment which I've commanded you. It says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be dismayed, be afraid. It says, For the Lord your God, it is he who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Verse 7, And Moses called Joshua and said unto him in the sight of Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord your God has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. So today we want to talk about faith for the unforeseen. Faith for the unforeseen. Father, thank you so much for these that are here. Thank you so much for the words that you're going to release. I'm praying even now, God, that you would cause every single one of us to be in tune with what you're speaking to us in this season. So last week we talked about Moses and where did Moses come from? We talked about Moses' mother hearing the decree that the firstborn of all the children of Israel was going to be destroyed. That in itself is an interesting story. How this lady had the foresight to hear what was Pharaoh was getting ready to do because Pharaoh had heard that God was going to send a deliverer and because God was going to send a deliverer, it, he done exactly what we see happening in the New Testament with this guy named Herod at the birth of Jesus. So Moses came out of a season where God had prophesied that I'm getting ready to do something new and Moses was the one that was saved at, in, the, in the Nile River when Pharaoh's daughter came and picked him up and said, whose child is this? She took him to be her own son and we know Moses became the deliverer that Pharaoh didn't, didn't know that was coming, but God had ultimately had a plan that he was sending forth a deliverer to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt. Let's look at how vast the story is. So now it's 400 years since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now Moses comes on the scene and God remembered his covenant that he'd made 400 years before to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he was going to deliver the children of Israel out. So God has a way of placing things out there even hundreds of years in front
front of us that we must believe that God is faithful when he gives us a covenant, when he gives us a promise, that God's promise will prevail over what we see. So today we're talking about how it was that God has spoken now to Moses and said, Moses, listen, you're 120 years old. You've been following me since you was 80. You experienced me at the burning bush, Moses, and you uh, done what I told you to do. You've gone down to Egypt. You performed all these miracles in front of Pharaoh. You sent the locusts and you sent the gnats and you sent the flies, you sent the frogs and you turn water into blood. You caused the firstborn to die. He done lights. He done all of these different things to Pharaoh to deliver God's people from out of that, that, that Egyptian bondage. Now over these last 40 years, from 80 years old to 120 years old, we see Moses has been leading the children of Israel to the promised land. And what's so interesting about this story is God tells Moses, listen, <clears throat> You're not going to go out. You're, gonna, you're not able to go out and come in. And I don't remember, I don't think this actually believes that Moses has any physical limitations because as we read in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34 that Moses in himself, he wasn't limited in any way. The word of God says he was still as strong as he's ever been. His eyes were still, had not dimmed. His body was still physically strong at 120 years old. But this is what it says that God says to Moses, I'm getting ready to take you home to glory to be with me. He says, you're not going to go over uh, across the Jordan. He says, but God himself is going to cross the Jordan before you. And God's going to destroy, verse 3, and, and Deuteronomy 31, verse 3. It says, and God will destroy the nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. And Joshua himself will go over before you. So my cry out to each one of us in this room with the, with the news that we received last week, that this building that we're in is for sale. God is going before us, and God himself is going to destroy the nations that are before us or the enemies that are opposing us and God himself is fighting for us. We're learning that there's all different things that are moving different components in this community that are keeping us from what God really has in store for us. But I want you to know that we're not fighting this battle alone, baby. But the God of the universe, it is he that's fighting the battle before us and he says to each one of us that we must go and we must dispossess the land. God has planned and I believe firmly that some one who, who's going to be willing and able to help us carry on the vision that God has in store for us. Look at what it says about uh, Joshua. It says Joshua himself in verse 3 of Deuteronomy 31, it says, Joshua himself will cross over before you, just as the Lord said, the Lord will do to them as he done to Sion and Og. These were two kings, baby, that when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, these were the first two kings that said, hey, listen, we're going to take over all these people that we see coming out of Egypt. They're going to become slaves to us, but we know that the God of the universe, he fought for the children of Israel. He destroyed the king of Sion. He destroyed the king of Og, who was a descendant and really of, of, of uh, the forefathers of really what we would see in Goliath, who was a giant whose bed was nine foot six inches long. And it says, and the Amorites in the land. And God said, God destroyed them. Here's what I'm saying to you, ma'am. And here's what I'm saying to you, sir. The Lord is going with us. The Lord is going with us. In God's commandment to me and you, as he goes with us, he commands us to be strong in verse 6. He commands us to be of good courage in verse 6. He commands us to not be fearful in verse 6. He commands us to not be afraid in verse 6. It says, for the Lord your God, it is he who goes before you. It's the Lord your God who will never leave you. It's the Lord your God who will never forsake you. So the challenge is for every single one of us, as we step into the destiny that God has for us, we must recognize that God is commanding each one of us to be strong, to be of good courage, to not fear, to not be afraid, to recognize recognize his presence and that his presence will never leave us nor forsake us. So the question becomes to each one of us, will we do these, these six or seven things that God has commanded us to do? He's commanded us to be strong. We don't find strength in ourselves. He gives us his word in Philippians 4.13. says, I can do all things through who? Christ who strengthens me. So the question becomes every single one of us as we transition, as we move forward in God, 
Will we rely on our own strength, our own abilities? Or will we faithfully be encouraged and be strengthened through our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? The next command he gives us, he says, I want you to be of good courage. Now, courage is different than strength. Strength is the ability to potential that's locked up in you, but courage is what you're going to do with the potential that's locked up with you. Are you going to faithfully trust in the God of the universe who's going before you, who's going to give you the courage to take the steps that need to be taken to fulfill the destiny and calling and purpose that he has for your life? The third commandment he gives me and you is to do not fear. The third commandment he gives me and you is do not fear. Fear. Ultimately, every single one of us, when there's a season of transition, the, the fear of the unknown is the thing that tries to grip us and hold us and keep us from the destiny that God has for us. But God is commanding me and you, ma'am and sir, to do not fear. Because ultimately, you wouldn't be in this church, you wouldn't be listening to this message if the God of the universe had not directed your path and had not led you to this point, had not led you to this church had not had you to get connected with him in this season. And God is saying to you, ma'am and sir, if you look back at your life, you look at every single change that's happened in your life, whether it's the growth of your family, if it's a move at physically from one address to another. If it's a change in income and change in finances, the God of the universe has been so faithful to you, he wants to remind you, sir, in order for you to move out and move in courage. First thing you got to do is you got to address fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear will want to consume you. Fear will tr try to grip your heart. Fear will try to keep you from going into destiny and calling and God spoken of you. Fear is something that we must deal with. And God is saying, when fear shows up, he says, I want you to take a stand. I want you to recognize that I've equipped you with, with, with something that's going to help you overcome your fears. The thing that's going to help you overcome your fears, he says, I'm going to cause you to be strong. And I'm going to cause you to be courageous. And when fear shows up, you can look fear in eye. You can say to fear, I'm not afraid because God is with me. I'm not afraid because God has given me strength. I'm not afraid because God has given me courage. And the word of God gives us his promises. God hadn't given me and you a spirit of fear. But baby, he's given us power. He's given us love. He's given us a sound mind. So as you, the voice of fear shows up for you, the word of God saying, listen, God's already equipped you for that. God hadn't given you a spirit of fear, and so it must not be a gift from God. It's a gift from the devil, baby. Don't receive the gift. The package of fear is going to show up at your front door, and it's going to be doorbell ringing. It's going to be the, 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 the fear delivery guy. Hey, here's some fear for you. And God said, don't receive the package. Don't sign for the fear package. God says, listen, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. I've given you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. God says, when your thoughts are going crazy, God says, I want you to focus on my power, my love for you, and I want your mind to be sound. And when everything seems like it's falling apart, God says, I want you to not be afraid. Focus on my power, my sound mind that I've given you, and my love that I've given you. God is saying, I don't want you, ma'am. I I don't want you, sir, to be afraid because I've given you power over fear. I've given you my love so you know that I love you. And that's nothing that I'm going to allow to destroy or to, to, to cause you to be uh, destroyed. And he says, I want you, want you to have a sound mind when your thoughts are going every, every which way. God is saying, listen, I want you to think about me. Place your folks on me. He says, I don't want you to be afraid. He says, for the Lord, it is he that goes before you. He says, he will never leave you. And he'll never forsake you. And God is saying to me and you, no matter what it is that we see, he said he's, he's not going to ever leave us. And he's not going to forsake us. I love this because not only does Moses give the children of Israel these words that we find in Deuteronomy chapter 31, but let's look at the next place that God, he, he makes a pit stop over in chapter 32. He says, listen, this is what's getting ready to happen to children of Israel. He says, I, I, God is getting ready to take you across this Jordan, and God is going to give you the promise. And when God leads you into the promise, the first thing that you got to recognize is in the leading into the promised land, that when you get in the promised land, there's going to be some voices that you're going to hear in the promised land. Oftentimes in our life, maybe it's success, and God brings us in the blessing. When God takes us through a change, God is saying, listen, there are going to be some voices that are going to try to get you off track. There are going to be some voices that are going to try to make you forget the covenant that I've made with your fathers 
400 years ago. The fact that you're in the promised land is because I've been with you all 400 of these years and I've never left you and I've never forsaken you and I'm bringing you into the promised land. So when you hear the voices that are saying to you, ma'am and sir, to get off of God's plan for your life, you need to do this independently of your church. God is saying to this, saying to you, sir, God is saying to you, ma'am, those are the voices of the enemy and you must not break your covenant, your oath, your agreement with God because you've allowed other voices to get you off track from my destiny and purpose for your life. And God saying to you, ma'am, God saying to you, sir, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, he's giving you fair warning that there will be other gods who try to steal your destiny, your purpose, my calling for your life to get you off track. It may be pride. It may be fame. It may be fortune. It may be finances. It may be promises that cannot be fulfilled outside of the will of God. And God is saying to you, ma'am and sir, do not listen to the voices. And that's Deuteronomy 32. He goes on to say, hey, I don't want you to listen to the voices. Next thing he tells him, he says, listen, chapter 33, he says, listen, this is what God's plan for you. So Moses, he begins to call all the people up there, tribe by tribe, and he begins to release a blessing on each one of the tribes, and every single tribe that comes up, y'all know there's a 12 tribe, so he calls every single one Joseph's tribe, and Naphtali's tribe, and Dan's tribe, and Judah's tribe, and he calls all the tribes, and he begins to speak the promises. Go read it for yourself. He begins to speak the promises the things that God has for them individually. It wasn't all of them together. He said, I'm taking y'all all in the promised land, but baby, this is God's specific promise for you. If this is what God wants me and you to know about this thing, the faith for the unforeseen, that God has a specific promise for you, that there's something wonderful in the promise and being obedient to God that God has for every single one of us. When we stay the course, when we submit ourselves unto God, God's saying to us in Deuteronomy chapter 33 that there's a specific promise that God has with your name on it. There's a specific promise that God has for your family. There's a specific promise that God has for the generations that are coming to follow you. And the only way that we can get in the specific plan is we must maintain our covenant agreement with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not allow the voices to get us distracted, but fully and wholly trust that the God of the universe is speaking his choice blessings over us to help us go into the destiny and calling that he has for us. I love it because not only as he gives us you know, what the warnings are in chapter 32. He gives us what the promises are in chapter 33. Then in chapter 34, he does something with Moses that's so unique and special. Look at the first verse of Deuteronomy chapter 34. It says that God, he calls Moses to himself. And it says, and Moses went up from the plains of Moab. And it says, unto the Mount Nebo, which God told him to do, to the top of Pisgah. And it says that that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed Moses all the land of Gilab, Gilead unto Dan and to Naphtali. And it says, and the land of Ephraim and the land of Manasseh and all the, all the land of Judah unto the, east, unto the utmost sea. And it says, and to the south, to the plain and the valley of Jericho, to the city of the palm trees of Tazor. And it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, this is the land which I swear to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed, and I will cause thy seed to see it in thine eyes, and thou shalt not go over hither. It says, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And it says, and God buried Moses in the valley of the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, and no man knoweth his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes was not, were not dim, nor his natural force abated. It says, and the children of Israel wept for Moses over the the plains of Moab 30 days. So the, the days of weeping and mourning of Moses were had ended. And it says, and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of, of uh, full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And it says, and there has not arose a, a prophet since Israel 
in Israel, like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, in Pharaoh, to, to Pharaoh, and to all the servants of and to all of all of his land, and in all the mighty, in all that mighty hand, in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all of Israel. Here's a point, here's a point that God wants each one of us to leave here with today. He wants us to leave here with this point. Not only does he call Moses up and says, I'm going to give you faith for the unforeseen, Moses. I want you to climb to the top of Mount Nebo. He says, once you, once you go in the land of Moab, I want you to climb the top of Mount Nebo. He says, when you get to the top of Mount Nebo, he says, I want to show you all the promises, the land that I, I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob now 400 years ago. He says, I want you to see it, and I want you to know that even though that you don't understand what's going on, I want to show you that every single one of these tribes, I'm showing you the lands that I'm giving to each one of the tribes, and I want you to see the lands that I'm giving to the tribes. And it says that Moses done something that's unforeseen for us, that Moses, God told him, I want you to climb the mountain, and when you climb the mountain, there you're going to die. God commanded Moses to lay down his life. I love this because Moses is still strong. Moses is still vibrant, but Moses had faith for the unforeseen. Moses himself, he climbed to the top of Mount Nebo, and God showed Moses everything that he was going to do. And then it says that Moses laid down his life. And God, when Moses laid down his life, that God took Moses and buried him in the valley of Moab. And here's my point to you, that the Bible talks about there being a dispute between the archangel Michael and the archangel Lucifer concerning the, the uh, uh, Satan, concerning the body of Moses. And this is what I'm saying to you, ma'am and sir, that the God of the universe has spoken to each one of us. And he's saying, listen, even though you don't understand what I'm doing, God is saying to us, I want you to be faithful to me in the end. I want you to climb the mountain. I want you to see what I'm getting ready to do. Even if you don't get a chance to walk it out, baby, I want you to know that I'm a God that's faithful. I'm a God that fulfills his promises. I'm a God that never is going to leave you for, or forsake you. I'm a God that's giving you strength for the transition. I'm a God that's causing you to have courage to go forward in me. I'm a God God that's not going to let anything deter you, deter me. And the word of God says that God had blessed the servant Joshua with wisdom. God had blessed Joshua with wisdom. Say, Joshua, listen, my servant Moses is dying. God gave Moses faith for the unforeseen. Moses was willing to climb out uh, Nebo. And Moses didn't know like, hey, I'm never coming down from this mountain. But God knew Moses was never coming down from the mountain. God knew that when Moses got to the top of the mountain, that Moses was going to have to lay down his life so that God could take the children of Israel into the promised land. So my question becomes to every single one of us listening to this message, are you willing to lay down your life? I'm not saying that you've got to die and take your last breath like Moses did, but are you willing to lay down your own desires, your own will, your own purpose, your own goals, your own dreams, and say, God, listen, no matter what it is that we're going through, no matter what kind of transition that we're making, God, I want you to recognize the fact that I'm in with you, God. I'm going to keep my covenant with you. I'm going to keep my oath with you. I'm going to keep my agreement with you. And God, I'm willing to sacrifice my own desires, my own will, God, so I can fulfill your will. I thank you, God. I'm willing to go wherever you go. I want to go with you and be like Moses. Moses says to God, listen, God, if you don't go up with us, don't let us leave this land. We're only willing to go as far as you will go with us. My question to you, ma'am and sir, are you willing today to say to the God of the universe that yes, God, I'm willing to go with you. I'm willing. I'm willing to go with you. And God is saying to you, listen, I'm giving you everything that you need so that you can overcome the things that are opposing you. You must recognize there are going to be voices. And those voices are going to be demonic. The voices are going to be the voice of the enemy. The voices are not just going to be to pull you away from this church. The voice is going to be to pull you away from your eternal relationship with God the Father. The voices are coming. And when the voices come, God is saying to you, are you going to take a stand for me when the voices come? 
Are you going to covet your relationship with me when the voices come? Are you going to keep your covenant with me when the voices come? God said, listen, I got a blessing in store for you, 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 you personally. I got a blessing in store for you. I got a blessing in store for your family. The only way you get to the blessing is you got to go to the land of promise. The only way you get to where I want you to get to is you got to recognize that I am with you. My presence goes with you. You've got to recognize, sir, you got to recognize, ma'am, that I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. But you can leave me and you can forsake me. And God doesn't want that for you. God wants you to walk in the promise that he has in store for you. Let's stand our feet and we want to pray. So, Father, it's in the blessed name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we thank you for this message. The message is faith for the unforeseen. That God, we don't know how it's all going to work out, but we can trust your word. That you, you spoke to your prophet uh, Moses. You spoke to your prophet Joshua. You commanded the children of Israel as Moses spoke over them. He gave them fair warning that these are the voices that are going to come to you and the promise that I'm giving you, that there's blessing and there's favor in front of you. Then you told them, listen, this is the blessing that God has in store for you. I'm praying that over every single one of us in this room. God, would you protect us from the voices of the enemy? Would you protect us from the voice of discouragement? Would you protect us from the voice of fear? Would you protect us from the voice of depression and anxiety and worry? Would you protect us from all the voices that would want to oppose you, the voice of shame? Would you protect us, God? from every single voice that want to steal us away from our commitment, our oath, and our covenant to follow you all the days of our life. Would you protect and keep us? God, would you cause us to recognize the specific promises that you have for us as individuals and the specific promises that you have for our family? God, would you cause us to recognize that you're faith-giving God, and no matter what it is that we're facing, facing that you are giving us faith for the unforeseen. So, Father, I'm praying for every single person under the sound of my voice, those who are watching this around the world, I pray, God, that you will cause our hearts to be connected with yours, that no matter what kind of transition that we're going through in our lives, in our marriage, in our finances, in our health, that you're the God that goes with us, that you've given us courage to overcome every fear, you've given us courage to overcome every type of afraidness in the name of Jesus, and you're causing us to be strong in you from this moment on. So if you're here in this room, you've never invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life. We don't want to clever close out of service here at Life Church without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. To make Jesus the Lord of your life. And we, you simply have to do that. The Bible says those that confess with their mouth and believe in their hearts that Jesus is God's son and God raised him from the dead, that they shall be saved. And, uh, and, that's, and nobody can tell you what you believe in your heart, but Jesus is looking in this moment. The angels are giving, being given charge concerning this service, concerning your life. And if you believe that Jesus is God's son and that God raised him from the dead, I'm simply going to ask you on the count of three to raise your hand in there and we're going to pray a prayer with you. And God is going to save you and your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Not because of a prayer that you prayed, because of the belief in your heart. That God is looking at your heart in this moment. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And if that's you, on the count of three, one, two, three. Just simply raise your hands in there. Thank you, God, for every hand that's been raised in homes, on laptops, and cars, every place that this service is being watched in this building. God, would you cause every heart that's said yes to you to be saved? If you want to pray this prayer, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you're God's son. I believe God raised you from the dead for me. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for shedding your blood that I could be made right with God. Thank you for saving me today and making all things new in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now I want to pray for you that are still listening and I want you to please just have an open heart to God's divine protection for our lives. God's divine direction for our lives. What God will do in us and through us when we trust Him and we know that He's faithful to us and that He's never going to leave us or forsake us. Thank you, God. 
I just sense God's presence coming all over me. I don't know what you sense or feel in this room, but I want you to just receive it. If you could just place your palms up like you're receiving a gift, God's presence is going to fill your heart, soul, mind, and strength that you know that He is with you. Just place your palms up like you're receiving a gift. And God's going to do that for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every single person that says yes to you, God. We want to keep our covenant with you. We want to keep our oath, our agreement with you. We thank you, God, that you've given us fair warning. Hey, this is the direction I'm taking you. There's so many moving pieces, God, to this puzzle of us transitioning from one location to another. I'm asking, God, that you cause your presence to fill every heart, that you cause a spirit of strength to come now, a spirit of courage to come now, that you would uproot every form of fear and every form of being afraid, that you would release power, you release love, you release a sound mind over every single person who's acknowledging you by simply pace, placing their palms up. Say, yes, God, we receive that. Yes, God, we receive your presence with us. Yes, God, we receive the promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. And we thank you for doing that now in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.